What is up amigos? Today we're going through the Struhl number, what it is, why is it important, and some examples. So first of all, what is the Struhl number? We often write Struhl number as ST equals F L on V. What are these terms? Well, this one here is the frequency. This one here is the characteristic length. And this is the velocity of the free stream flow. So what is this number? What does it refer to? Well, it's actually one of, I would say, the five most important non-dimensional numbers in fluid mechanics in general. The others being, for example, the Reynolds number, lift and drag coefficients, the uh, moment coefficient, and the Struhl number. So we have the frequency lumped in here. The other two uh, parameters are fairly standard in a lot of equations. What the Struhl number does is it tells us, based on any object, if we have, let's say, a cylinder, and we have a flow going over it at V and the characteristic length being the diameter of L, we can then figure out, just by knowing the Struhl number, what the frequency of the vortices being shed from this are. And if you don't know about von Karman streets, for example, check out this video here that we've covered in a CFD simulation of cylinders. So if we were to plot the Struhl number with the Reynolds number, so we have the Reynolds number on this axis here. And if you don't know what the Reynolds number is, check out this video here. And we have the Struhl number here for the cylinder. And let's say we're going from zero to, let's say 1000 is here. And we're going to go all the way up to 100,000. And this can be, let's say a log scale. The Struhl number will be quite high and then it will drop and it will be fairly flat across this entire range. Which means that if we change the velocity, we just to get the different Reynolds number or we change the characteristic length to get a different Reynolds number, the Struhl number will still hover at a certain value. And that, for example, here is 0 0.2. So why is this important? Well, the Struhl number is very important for many reasons. For example, as I mentioned, we have a cylinder or any object, any bluff body. We we'll usually get a periodic vortex street. So this vortex shedding coming off here. What this does is that it creates this side to side force. And this shedding occurs at a certain frequency. So this is important in terms of the resonance frequency of this object. For example, if you have a really big stack, so smoke coming out, this chimney and smoke coming up, and you have the flow going over it, this chimney will then start to shed these vortices and will start to wobble from side to side. If that frequency matches the resonant frequency of the stack, that can then result in this amplification of this motion until it finally breaks. And this is very common, it can happen. For example, in 1948, I think it was, this bridge called Tacoma Bridge, that actually failed because of this phenomenon. So knowing the frequency of this vortex shedding phenomenon can allow us to understand, okay, will this vortex um, shedding result in this resonant frequency being hit and this devastation occurring? Another reason why the Struhl number is so important is because of this frequency again, it tells us what the tonal noise will be. So let's say we have a Struhl number of, as I, as I mentioned, 0 0.2 for the cylinder for this entire Reynolds number range. So let's say ST Struhl number equals 0 0.2. The characteristic length is one meter, and this is the diameter. We'll get into this a little bit more in a second. And the velocity of the free stream flow is one meter per second. So 0 0.2 equals the frequency of this vortex shedding pattern times one divided by one. So these obviously cancel out, they're one anyway. That means that the frequency of this vortex shedding is 0 0.2 hertz. That's the SI unit. So we now know that if we have this cylinder here and we have this shedding at 0 0.2, that's going to be the tonal noise. Fortunately for this particular case, 0 0.2 for a tonal noise is below the frequency that humans can hear. So we wouldn't even hear it. That's nice. However, if we were to have a different Struhl number, let's say it goes up to 200 or something, now all of a sudden this is goes to 200 hertz, and this is now within our audible uh, frequency of hearing. So that's going to then result in like us getting annoyed. So that is the Struhl number and why is it important? Let's talk about the characteristic length a little bit more. So the characteristic length is a little bit of a tricky thing to characterize sometimes. For example, the Reynolds number as well, if you've looked at that video, we went through again the characteristic length and how we can change it. In essence, the characteristic length is really just any length you want, you just need to specify it. But a, more, a better way of, of choosing your characteristic length is often at the width of an object. So if we have a triangle, for example, and the flow is coming this way, I can pick the characteristic length to be this, distance, that distance, this distance, whatever. But I know from like an educated guess that this bluff body, the 
major length that is going to affect the vortex shedding is going to be this base here. So I want to make sure that I sort of characterize this frequency shedding, this vortex shedding quite well. So I'm going to say this base here, this length, that's going to be the main driver in terms of the, the geometry for this uh, vortex shedding pattern. So I'm going to say this is the characteristic length. Now, other researchers might say the characteristic length is from here to here, and they might have good reason for it for a certain uh, situation. They might say, okay, for a particular situation, this geometry, this length here did affect this shedding pattern as well. So I'm going to pick this length instead of this length. They're free to do so. You just need to specify what that is so that everyone knows. So there's the straw number and some examples, for example, a cylinder, a triangle, a stack, and why it is important, and how we use it to find the frequency of a vortex shedding pattern, and how that relates to the velocity and the characteristic length. So if you like this video, make sure to like it, and if you see more like this, click the subscribe button. And if you want to learn more about theory, check out a book by John D. Anderson in the links below, and our courses in the links below. And I'll see you next video. Peace out, amigos.